If you live in New York, and especially if you live in Brooklyn, as I do, Eugene is ubiquitous. He's like the comedian king of Hipsterville. And wherever you live, you can see him on YouTube explaining how to pick up girls or inventing slogans to promote Canada. All, all with a pretty straight face that leaves some room to wonder if he's actually kidding. Eugene emigrated from the Soviet Union in the late 1970s when he was four years old. I assume accompanied by his family. Um, please welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Eugene Merman. That is all true. <laughs> ah, the hipster king. <laughs> I don't feel it. Um, alrighty. Uh, I, uh, I was, uh, I was actually, I was in Brighton Beach. I was walking around and I went to the store and uh, it's a, Brighton Beach is a very Russian Jewish neighborhood. I went into the store and I saw a board game called Let My People Go. <laughs> and my first thought was, too soon. <laughs> I got a wake up call, not like, stop doing heroin. Um, like a regular one at a hotel. And normally what happens is, you know, you ask them to wake you up and they call and they're like, wake up, you asked for this. <laughs> but this hotel that I stayed at, when I answered the phone, they went, it's May 5th, 2010. Why are you telling me the year? What do you think I did last night that I don't know what year it is? I was in uh, Manchester, England, uh, walking around. It was pretty late. It was like midnight or so. And I was walking around. And this guy came up to me and he's like, excuse me, are you from around here? And I was like, no. And he was like, great. <laughs> That's not good news. That's not a guy who wants the time or directions. And, uh, and so I sort of start walking away and he gets really mad and he's like, everybody thinks I want money. And I was like, I don't know what you want. <laughs> sort of leaving. And then he gets even more mad and he goes, I just got off the bus. I'm from Czechoslovakia. And I was like, well, I have some very bad news for you, sir. Your country has been dissolved. I don't know when you got on the bus, but it must have been the 90s. I was in Western Mass and I saw that uh, Linens and Things was going out of business. I know. And I was like, should have been more specific. I'll do that. Um, <laughs> sorry. That was, uh, so I wanted to tell a story. Um, I recently moved to a block and a half <laughs> in Brooklyn. Don't worry. <laughs> and uh, and like anyone, uh, I got uh, cable installed. I had my cable moved, uh, and it was supposed to be installed on April 23rd, between two and five. And at five o'clock, I called, and I was like, "Hey, somebody's supposed to come." And they're like, "Oh yeah, we entered the information wrong. No one's coming." <laughs> I was like, "What do you mean?" They're like, "Yeah, sorry." I was like, when will they come? And they're like, May 4th. <laughs> I was like, what do you mean? And they're like, that's it. And I, I was so annoyed. And there, But there's like nothing you can, and don't worry, they didn't come May 4th. Um, <laughs> I was so annoyed, but I was like, there's nothing, like I could write them an angry letter and that somebody would get it and just think I was crazy. And I didn't want that. I wanted them to know I was crazy. <laughs> so what I decided to do is take out, uh, full page ads in New York newspapers <laughs> with my letter to Time Warmer, Warner Cable. Time Warner Cable. Uh, so in the New York Press and in the Greenpoint Gazette and probably more <laughs> is my letter to Time Warner Cable right here. <laughs> my full page ad. So this is the letter <laughs> that I wrote them in this ad that I paid for. Dear Time Warner Cable, on April 23rd, I moved and had an appointment with Time Warner Cable to come and install cable, internet, and phone service, and no one showed up. When I called, I was told my appointment was entered wrong and moved to May 4th without anyone calling me. No big deal. Why would a company check with someone to see if they are home on a Wednesday afternoon? Of course they are. Everyone is. 
Name one person who isn't home on a Wednesday afternoon. You can't, it's impossible, because everyone is home. It would be a waste of resources to call and talk to him. Did Stalin ever call people before he arrested them and sent them to die in Siberian work camps? No. Why should Time Warner Cable have a policy that is any different from Stalin's? Did you know that on Yelp, Time Warner Cable has one and a half stars? That's less stars than Jeffrey Dahmer, who killed and ate people, maybe even had sex with their skulls, I don't really know. Obviously what I'm saying is untrue because Yelp does not review serial killers. But if they did, his baba ganoush would be better than yours if you both made baba ganoush, even if his drugged and murdered people. Sorry that got weird to you, I just made you read that confusing thing. <laughs> to give you an idea of how much I dislike your company, I've come up with plagues I hope God smites your board of directors with. I know he'll only do this if you enslave the Jews, but considering you might have a monopoly in New York City, you sort of already have. Here are the plagues. Awkward. Every board member's cell phone ring loudly announces their weight and also the day they'll die. <laughs> Bathroom. The constant feeling that you have to go number two, but completely forgetting how. <laughs> Improv. Your firstborn will want to be a short form improviser. <laughs> popcorn. Your secondborn will smell like hot buttered popcorn. It's not that bad at first, but I bet eventually it will be maddening. <laughs> Sincerely, Eugene Merman and probably every one of your customers. <laughs> Thanks. P.S. On May 4th, I called... P.S. On May 4th, I called you and got an automated message saying my appointment was moved to May 10th, but spoke to two representatives who assured me it was still on May 4th. 20 minutes later, I got a call saying the technician called and couldn't reach me and my new appointment would be on May 12th. An hour later, I got a call apologizing and saying my appointment was moved to May 6th. Why does your company act like a controlling, abusive husband on an episode of Law & Order? <laughs> P.P.S. On May 6th, the very nice professional man came, rang my doorbell, and installed everything. I would feel remiss to not mention that a handful of other employees were also very helpful. However, overall, your company is run like an ill-managed Soviet factory. I bet if Ayn Rand was still alive, she'd write a fun-to-read but poorly argued book about how appalling and inefficient your company is. Please cut it out. Thank you. Thank you.